pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. This is always a good looking thing. <laughs> Uh, first item of business, uh, comments by the mayor. Um, I want to read out uh, some 2017-2018 board and commission appointments and reappointments here at the end of the year. Uh, with respect to the audit committee, the appointment of William Smith um, uh, as an appointment. Um, and Vincent Sparrow, a, a current member of the audit committee, uh, to be chair, who graciously accepted it when I asked him by email to do it while he was on a business trip to India uh, last week, which was uh, pretty, shows uh, commitment and dedication to the city. Um, for the Parks and Recreation Board, the appointment of Nancy Duffy, and for the Eloa Farm Commission, the appointment of Alex Hodges uh, as a representative. Um, may I have a motion to approve those appointments? So moved. Second. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, uh, the motion uh, carries. Uh, next are comments by the city manager. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of the council. First, uh, wish everyone a happy holiday season. Second, um, since it is the season of giving, uh, it's very appropriate that this next item is on the agenda because we are very pleased uh, to announce that the uh, Deer Path Golf Course is a recipient of a very generous gift. And I won't steal the thunder of Alderman Newman or Alderman Beidler, who will go into details. But the reason that this is on the agenda this evening for you is under city policy, a gift of this magnitude, which is attached to specific naming rights, has to be approved by the city council. So ultimately, there will be a need to be an action by the city council to approve the proposed naming rights. But with that, I will turn it over to Alderman Newman, who can announce the the details of the gift. Thank you, Bob. Uh, I've got in front of me a press release uh, put together by Susan Banks, Dire uh, Communications Director here for the city. And I'll just take a couple minutes to read the highlights here. Nancy Hughes, a longtime Lake Forest resident, has donated $500,000 toward the renovation of Deer Path Golf Course owned by the city of Lake Forest. Uh, I am very pleased to make a gift for this community cause. The golf course is a Lake Forest treasure, which is a beautiful and serene place for everyone to enjoy during all four seasons, said Mrs. Hughes. The clubhouse at the course will be renamed, pending approval tonight, the John and Nancy Hughes Clubhouse in honor of this significant gift. The city began updates of the course in 2016 with improvements to the clubhouse, coursework, and landscaping, and has budgeted a total of $1.2 million for the project. The public-private partnership includes raising $2 million over a four-year time period to complete the project renovations, which include greens, drainage, halfway house, restrooms, golf cart fleet, and new cart barn, driving range expansion, and a new short game practice area. Uh, Mayor Rob Lansing, also in this release, says, since 1926, Deer Path Golf Course has been enjoyed by Lake Forest residents of all ages and, as a public course, has also attracted others from beyond our borders. Mrs. Hughes' generosity demonstrates that the course is valuable as a heritage amenity, a place with roots in the community's philanthropic past and lasting value for generations to come. This gift is a significant boost to our efforts to raise $2 million to complete this project. We can't thank Mrs. Hughes enough. Um, it's all been pretty much laid out here uh, what this is. This has all been advertised in advance. I'm extremely pleased by her generosity. 
I hope this is a signal to the rest of the community to jump on the bandwagon. There's still time to make contributions here in 2017, but this puts us ahead of schedule for this four-year campaign. So we've reached our goal for 2017, but don't let that deter you. There's still time. So, can, can I Can I add on to that? What, you, I've done a lot of fundraising over my X number of years of, of, of adult life, and something like this happens, and it's just it's extraordinarily special because first of all, it's a it, you know it's it's obviously needed funds that will be be used uh, for for improvements that we have we have lined up. Just to just to be clear, those funds don't. Net the, I think most of you who who use the golf course know that that the golf course was has been improved. Uh, there may be some things around the edges yet to do, but that was a beautiful new facility uh, or improves facility as of uh, as of last summer um, but there, there are plenty of other things that'll that 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 will be done and to 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 be able to honor with this naming someone who has been so extraordinary in this community the uh, John and Nancy Hughes lived here for I think I, um, I'm not sure how many quite how many I think she's been here for about 30 years he of course uh, died a few years ago incredibly generous to the community, very pleased to be residents of this community uh, for so many years. And sometimes the places you adopt become even more important than the places that you start out. And they had just just really loved uh, loved being here. And to, to, to show it this way, we, this is, there's a long tradition of this kind of philanthropy in Lake Forest, and this is absolutely in that tradition. But it's so meaningful, and, and uh, we are just, we are incredibly deeply appreciative. Now, I might get a little pragmatic here. The Part of the benefit of doing your gift this year is this is a multi-year campaign. So you can be, actually, the, 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 uh, Mrs. Hughes is not choosing to make her gift uh, multi-year, which is, which, which is also great. It's fine. We'll, we'll take lump sum gifts as well. Uh, but but um, people, if you want to spread a gift over a number of years, it's a great way to do it. And you could still do that this year and then have three more years to make a pledge. So it continues to be for you if you start this year a four-year campaign. So just finally, I think this is, as, as Tim noted, we've, we've still got uh, plenty of money left to raise. So don't think, okay, this is a done deal. <laughs> as far as I know, there are not three more $500,000 donors out there. The rest of it's going to be up to us at smaller increments. But, but bless Mrs. Hughes for giving us this gift uh, uh, at exactly the point where this is, just means, okay, we're going to pull this off, and it's going to be something. So join us. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mrs. Hughes. Just to follow up on what Prue said, Mrs. Hughes is remarkable. She's a major benefactor for the Gorton Community Center. That's right. And it wouldn't be what it is today without her substantial support. She's tremendous. Yeah. I'd also like to acknowledge the assistance of Merrill Lansing in this. He spent a lot of time uh, negotiating and talking to one of the key advisors of Mrs. Hughes. So nice assist for uh, Merrill. <laughs> keep, keep up the good work, Mayor Lansing. Well, it, the credit goes to uh, Mrs. Hughes' advisor who uh, envisioned this and uh, made it happen. So wonderful. Uh, Mr. God Mayor, bless these angels in Lake Forest. Who he come is forward. here this evening. If you have any questions for, well, I don't know. He's usually a pretty anonymous fellow, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. but uh, uh, well, I'm not even sure he wants his name mentioned. But uh, <laughs> he's apparently giving, not. He's I waving know. me off here. Okay. okay. Well, uh, yet another one of Lake Forest's miracles. You look back through the history of this town and the donations that have been given in money and in property, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, right through the present, as I often say to people, the, the miracle of our new hospital, the miracle of the Deer Paths Inn, complete reconstruction, uh, even the miracle of the reemergent Market Square, what's happening at Alloa Farm, Ragdale, Gorton, uh, it just goes on and on and on. And as I've pointed out once already at a council meeting, at uh, an audit committee meeting um, early in the summer, I learned that uh, there are uh, foundations of one sort or another in Lake Forest who have assets slightly exceeding $20 million, whose sole purpose is to support civic and cultural institutions and, uh, and other purposes uh, in Lake Forest. <laughs> Um, and it's um, all part of the great network of angels, I say, who, who bestow miracles on Lake Forest. And this is uh, yet another one, Tim. So thank you for what you and Prue are doing to lead this. Uh, 
this does require a formal actions uh, with regard to the naming rights per the agreement in the council packet. So may I please have a motion to approve the naming rights agreement um, as contained in your packets tonight. So moved. Second. <laughs> How appropriate. This is a roll call vote. <laughs> Alderman Beidler. Aye. Alderman Morris. Aye. Alderman Newman. Aye. Alderman Rummel. Aye. Alderman Tack. Aye. Alderman Reisenberg. Aye. Alderman Moreno. Aye. Alderman Bushman. Aye. Eight yeas, zero nay. Motion carries. Thank you very much. Um, the second item that's uh, under my report this evening dates back probably about a year when we were embarking on the um, Welcome Home campaign. And one of the initial comments I got from a resident was that part of the problem that Lake Forest had was that there's nothing going on in the city of Lake Forest. We're a boring community and we needed to be more like fill in the blank, another community. And um, initially that comment sort of made me think of when I was uh, a younger man with young children and they would be around on a s Saturday on, in the summer and they'd say, I'm bored, there's nothing to do in Lake Forest. And so the staff embarked on an analysis of how many activities are going on, because if you ask the various department heads uh, who get uh, dragged into many of these events and activities that go on in Lake Forest, particularly during the summer months, they would tell you that there's too much going on in Lake Forest, not, there's not enough. But I think what it led us to is um, a broader discussion about a community calendar and the fact that uh, there's no one place to go that uh, accumulates all the different activities that are going on. You have to go to either the Gorton website or Open Lands website or the city's website or whatever um, and to get pieces of it, but you really can't see the totality of all the activity that's going on. So this evening, um, you're going to hear a brief presentation from our management intern, Octavius Hayes, and Susan Banks, our communications manager, on uh, sort of what they learned uh, as they did this analysis. And then number two, going forward, uh, a brief report on this community calendar that's going to be launched uh, starting in uh, January of 2018. So Octavius? Um, thank you. Uh, good evening, Honorable Mayor. Lansing and presiding members of the City Council. <clears throat> community, community events celebrate key attributes that contribute to the pride and character of Lake Forest, such as the natural open spaces, lakefront, and other assets, diverse recreation and education opportunities, cultural arts, tradition, and historic value. The City of Lake Forest recognizes the connection community events have on the overall health and vitality of the community. And so this evening, I'll be presenting the city's 2017 community events report uh, with the purpose of reviewing and defining the types of events that take place in the city of Lake Forest for calendar year of 2017, identifying internal and external challenges that may present, that they may present, and explore opportunities to celebrate and increase awareness about events within the community of Lake Forest. Um, lastly, on behalf of the communications team, I'll be introducing the concept of the online citywide community calendar. <clears throat> Since 2000, preliminary community event reports have been done to review, define, and monitor the total volume of special events. If you take a look at the city's special event trends, there has been a steady increase in special event permit use over the last 16 years. Um, up until 2012, the city would process on average approximately 72 applications on an annual basis. Uh, the most recent study in 2015 reported a total number of 127 city special event permits processed. Uh, fast forward to 2017, the city has processed just over 140 total applications, which is almost double the amount uh, processed just five years ago. Um, at the request of the council, city staff launched a deeper study into the peak season community events to identify the total number of special events, as well as city sponsored events community and community based events. Um, and taking a closer look at events, at special events within the community for calendar year 2017, staff noted an extremely high volume of community events that took place during the months of June, July, August and September. 
uh, particularly, particularly city-sponsored events, which consist of um, events that are open to the public, uh, but sponsored by the city, um, and including but not limited to Lake Forest Day, um, <clears throat> festival and fireworks, the tree lighting ceremony, uh, Santa in the Market Square, and other events that take place in the community, um, as well as community-based events, which consist of activities that are open to the public, um, but are conducted by uh, through partnerships, associations, organizations, or um, uh, conducted to include uh, events that um, not only are sponsored through the city, but also uh, through partnerships. <clears throat> With scores of community organizations, educational institutions, and faith-based entities, as well as events held by the city, there's definitely um, plenty to do in the community. And matter of fact, due to the growing number of community events, um, that are taking place within the city of Lake Forest, it's become a bit challenging uh, for the community organizations and the city to secure necessary resources, uh, consult and plan for events, as well as manage, and communi manage communication and coordination among one another. Uh, some of the challenges that the city face um, are listed up there, uh, primarily uh, resource allocation and um, public safety and security. Uh, some of the challenges that our community partners face um, are things such as planning, uh, communication, and coordination, with an emphasis on communication. Uh, moving forward, this uh, staff recommends that the city should ensure uh, the full range of existing communication methods and tools are being utilized. Uh, consider ways to maximize utility from existing media publications and broadcast outlets, and continue to explore and leverage uh, emerging uh, and changing technologies. Um, <clears throat> as a result of ever-evolving technologies, numerous online products now exist and are now available, um, specifically online calendar products, um, which allow multi-user editing and submission tools, uh, mobile application use, um, as well as a multi-layer calendar view feature. Um, and other customized customization features as well. Uh, some of the benefits of a more robust online citywide community, community calendar would be uh, that it would drive people to the website um, so that they would know what's happening in the community, um, as well as increase and enhance awareness and uh, continue to support and strengthen the unique character of Lake Forest. Um, <clears throat> next steps for the city's communications team are uh, establishing user guidelines um, and submission requirements, uh, conducting CMS training, and uh, eventually launching, launching the citywide community calendar uh, prior to peak season. Um, so um, at this point, I'd like to open it up for questions. Sounds great. I have a question. It seems to me that Years ago, maybe Susan remembers. Oh, Alderman, can you can didn't you talk into your microphone? Yeah. Didn't we have a community calendar years and years ago? I, you know, as ancient as I am, I think that I kind of remember a community calendar that we all. Susan can talk. Well, I think Susan and I might have gone to high school together. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, I think there have been several iterations of a community calendar when. Um, I remember Gorton Community Center used to keep, keep a community calendar prior to um, computer. That's right, it was Gorton. Exactly, and then I think like Forest Bank and Trust kept, kept a community calendar, and then I think when some of the, the newspapers um, developed an online presence, then um, entities had, had an opportunity to, to submit their own events to to, to those online presences. I think the city also had a community calendar. I think the Chamber of Commerce has a community calendar right now, um, whereas each organization is responsible for entering their own um, information. But actually, we felt that the city and the city's website would be a wonderful landing place for all of these organizations to have a presence. So currently, um, the city's website only uh, promotes its own special events 
or large community events such as the Deer Path Art League Fall Festival or uh, bagpipes and bonfires that have, you know, uh, say a thousand attendees or something. So right now the communications team will be putting together guidelines and then we'll conduct um, training with those organizations so that they know how to become a part of our content management system. They will enter uh, the information that they would like published in the calendar. We will review it and approve it, and it'll, it'll appear in the calendar. And we think this is a wonderful opportunity for us to partner with all our community groups and um, promote our Welcome Home campaign so that when people are considering moving to Lake Forest, they will go to our website and see a very, very robust calendar. So just um, a word of advice for um, those who are particularly just looking for meetings, <laughs> there's going to be a lot more stuff on the calendar, but you will be able to filter how you look for that information on the calendar. Thank you. Any other questions of Octavius or Susan? More to come. Once we roll it out, we'll bring it back to the council so you can actually see the, the final product. So thank you, Octavius and thank Susan. You. And that completes my report for this evening. The, the city website is going to be quite robust. Got the entire history of the city and everything going on on it. So. Well, we're certainly trying to drive more and more information there. So as the one-stop shop. Yeah, it's a great repository for all things like forest. Um, thank you, Bob. The uh, next item is um, ports of council committees. The finance committee uh, just met. Um, and uh, first item, we have uh, three items. Consideration of an ordinance approving a fee schedule and ordinance adopting new fees related to development activity. Second reading and final approval presented by Elizabeth Holland, finance director. Thank you, Mayor. Um, as noted, uh, the City Council has several items on your agenda this evening for consideration of final approval. These items were discussed at the November 13th budget workshop, um, which was a finance committee meeting. Um, and these items were granted first reading approval on November 20th by the City Council. Uh, the first item on the agenda is an ordinance approving a fee schedule and ordinance adopting new fees related to development activity. Uh, every year, the operating departments are asked to review their fees um, as part of the budget preparation process and to propose changes in the fee schedule. Um, the, fees, the comprehensive fee schedule is included in your packet. The items proposed for revision are color-coded. Anything color-coded in green is simply inserted from the city code. It's not a proposed change in the fee, but we're trying to transition all the specific fees in the city code to the comprehensive fee schedule. Um, those uh, highlighted in yellow are proposed increases in the current fee. So you can see the current fee and the proposed fee and the percentage change, as well as the anticipated annual revenue to be generated by that change. And those in orange are new fees proposed. Um, this year there are only fees, new fees proposed related to development. Um, and that requires a specific ordinance, so that's why you have two ordinances before you as part of the fee package. There's also a summary on this slide by department and type of fee, the fund in which the revenue is deposited and budgeted, as well as the total annual revenue projected from the proposed fees. Um, you'll note that the two significant items are an increase in the public safety pension fee as part of funding for public safety pensions, um, as, and that is proposed to um, double from $10 to $20 per quarter for a single family and go from $35 to $70 per quarter for other um, types of properties. That would generate $290,000 and um, simultaneously is reduced from the tax levy requirement when we talk about the tax levy on the next item. Um, the second with the more significant revenue impact is adjustments to water rates. Uh, the five-year financial forecast for the water utility fund anticipates a 2.5% annual increase in revenues to offset inflationary cost increases. Um, so those fees are proposed for adjustment generating about $165,000 in additional revenue. In the interest of time, I can answer any questions. Um, we can go into the public safety pension fee in more detail if you'd like, but um, we did discuss that on November 20th, so. Any questions? Thank you. 
questions? Thank you. Yes, we've had several meetings on this, and uh, this uh, it's been a well scrubbed evaluation. Um, any questions, comments? Uh, seeing none. Uh, if uh, is there any public comment uh, with regard to the uh, approving this fee schedule and related ordinance? Uh, seeing none, I'll ask for a motion uh, to grant uh, final approval uh, of the pro proposed ordinance. So moved. Second. Um, and this is a roll call vote. Alderman Beidler. Aye. Alderman Morris. Aye. Alderman Newman. Aye. Alderman Rummel. Aye. Alderman Tack. Aye. Alderman Reisenberg. Aye. Alderman Moreno. Aye. Alderman Bushman. Aye. Eight yay, zero nay. Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, next is consideration of an ordinance establishing the 2017 tax levy. This is the second reading and final approval, also presented by Elizabeth Hollow. Okay. Um, similarly, this was also discussed on November 30th and November 20th, so I won't spend a lot of time. Just a few items to note from these slides that we did review on November 20th. Currently, the uh, county assessor and county clerk's office is projecting a 5.2% increase in the assessed valuation of the city as a whole. Um, so that is good news to know that uh, valuations continue to improve. Um, this slide details the individual line items is fairly difficult to read, but um, as noted in the discussions in November, um, the primary change in the tax levy relates to police and fire pension levies. Um, you can see those in the first category labeled pension funds at the top of the slide. Um, due to a change in the funding methodology to try to curb that ramp up and an eight to nine percent annual increase, um, the city has changed some of its actuarial um, processes to increase funding um, immediately, but to shorten that ramp and have uh, less annual increase going forward. Um, so that is driving um, the majority of the increase in this year's tax levy. And finally, this slide shows the projected impact on an average home. We use $800,000. $800, That's the medium home value in Lake Forest. Um, and you can see that with the pr projected increase in assessed valuation and the proposed levy, um, that would have about $123 impact on an average home for the city's portion of the tax levy. So as noted, this levy ordinance includes both the city levy and the library levy, which together accounts for about 22 to 23% of the total tax bill. Um, this just shows a breakdown of the use of property tax revenue um, in the different categories. Of nearly half the levy is um, general operating funding. Uh, and then you can see the proportion for pension, parks and recreation, capital outlay, library, and debt service. And then this slide is new. We were asked um, by Alderman Rummel to survey the other taxing districts in Lake Forest to see what they were anticipating for increases. So this slide shows the input that we received from the uh, College of Lake County, Lake County, Lake County Forest Preserve, the two school districts, uh, North Shore Sanitary District. We used uh, the representative parcel in Lake Forest is Shields Township, which is what we use for comparison year to year. Uh, but there are actually properties in Lake Forest that are in five different townships, so their information may vary, but it's a very small percentage of the total tax bill. Mm -hmm. So you can see based on the projected increase of each agency and then aggregated based on the percentage of this year's tax bill, um, it would aggregate to about a 3.1% increase overall uh, to Lake Forest property taxpayer. Thank you for that. Sure. Thank you for that. You're very welcome. Um, and so finally, we uh, did have first reading. Um, I should have changed that slide on November 20th. And so now we are requesting and recommending final approval of the 2017 tax levy ordinance. All right. Um, thank you also for the presentation for our median home value of $800,000, which it comes out this year, what is it, $3,200? Yeah, 
am I reading that right? With the library attached to it. And uh, my analogy for that is that means uh, for seven months of lawn service, if you divide seven into 3,200, that's what, uh, $450 or something. Uh, if you could get lawn service for that, and you certainly get a lot more than a shave and a haircut from the city when you look at the long list of, uh, as we did, uh, the finance committee meeting earlier, the long list of services, those core services and elective services that cover everything from public safety to certain rec activities <coughs> of the town and uh, on and on and on. And uh, so it is, a uh, by any number of measures, a, a very uh, uh, tightly uh, run uh, and, and, and high-functioning uh, uh, city in that respect, in my personal opinion. So uh, with that, any uh, comments uh, from the audience regarding the 2017 tax levy? Uh, seeing none, I'll bring it back to council and ask for a motion to grant uh, final approval of the ordinance establishing the 2017 tax levy. So moved. A second. Second. I would like to ask a question Please. before we vote. No. Uh, thank you. Um, with the actuarial changes that we've taken on the pension, uh, I don't generally expect an entity to change their actuarial assumptions on an annual basis. Can you give some insight into what you would anticipate, how frequently you would anticipate actuarial changes to occur to the pension accounting? For the city certainly um, I agree that we probably would not make recommendations next year on changes with the exception of the mayor has appointed a pension subcommittee that continues to meet to talk about the or amortization period okay. and right now um, the city has a closed amortization period which means the closer you get to the funding deadline the shorter number of years you have to amortize the unfunded liability so the last item that the pension sub subcommittee continues to review is the potential for moving to an open amortization period. And we would expect the pension subcommittee to have their recommendation to the council next year for the 4-30-18 actuarial evaluation. So that would be one item that may still change. Thank you very mm -hmm. much. Yeah, that very interesting opportunity for the city to um, greatly smooth the impact of pensions enormously uh, pull that pension curve down quite a lot, almost to a flat line, um, and also uh, promote, um, and there's some analysis to this, but uh, intergenerational equity is, uh, which I think uh, many Lake Foresters feels quite important, um, is a very powerful tool, and that was always going to happen in the next uh, for the next year. Um, I have a motion. Mm -hmm. And a second. Uh, this is a roll call vote. Alderman Beidler. Aye. Alderman Morris. Aye. Alderman Newman. Aye. Alderman Rummel. Aye. Alderman Tack. Aye. Alderman Reisenberg. Aye. Alderman Moreno. Aye. Alderman Bushman. Aye. Eight yay, zero nay. Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, third is approval of ordinances abating the 2017 tax levies for various general obligation alternate revenue bond issues this is the second reading and final approval also yet again presented by elizabeth Hollow. thank you again mayor um, the city issues all of its debt as general obligation debt which means it pledges the full faith and credit and taxing authority of the city to pay the debt service However, in actuality, we use alternative revenues to pay some of the debt service on the bonds. That requires abatement ordinances to be approved each year to actually reduce the debt service property tax levy um, for those bond debt service amounts that are being paid from alternate revenue sources. So this slide just shows a summary of each of the outstanding bond issues. Um, the columns show the source of alternative revenue being used and then it gets us to the net levy, which is the 1.5 million that you saw on the previous presentation. So there are five separate abatement ordinances um, abating the tax levy requirement for the five bond issues that do have alternative revenues going towards the debt service. Okay, all as previously presented. Um, 
any comment from the public on this matter? Uh, seeing none, I'll bring it back to council and ask for a motion to approve uh, the ordinance abating the 2017 tax levies for various general obligation alternate revenue bond issues. So moved. Second. Uh, this is also a roll call vote. Alderman Beidler? Aye. Alderman Morris? Aye. Alderman Newman? Aye. Alderman Rummel? Aye. Alderman Tack? Aye. Alderman Reisenberg? Aye. Alderman Moreno? Aye. Alderman Bushman? Aye. Eight yeas, zero nay. Motion carries. Uh, thank you. Next item, uh, report of the Public Works Committee, introduced by Randy Tack, Chairman of the Public Works Committee. Okay. Um, the Public Works Committee would uh, like consideration of a resolution approving a Lake Forest Preservation Foundation demonstration project agreement. Um, the purpose of this is uh, to uh, essentially complete work on the city train, the East City train station. As most of you know, um, we've spent uh, quite a while upgrading the train station with numerous governmental grants, which to date I think come close to $3 million. Um, and yet, despite all of that and coming to the end of our uh, grant funding, uh, there's some remaining work that needed to be done. Um, and so uh, in the spirit of Lake Forest, uh, when we run out of money, we seek uh, assistance from some of our uh, generous foundations. And in this case, um, in order to finish the project, we've um, had some discussions with the uh, Lake Forest Preservation Foundation. And I'm going to let Mike fill you in on the details of that. Thank you, Alderman Tech. Good evening. Uh, Honorable Mayor, members of Council, um, tonight, um, as uh, Alderman Tech mentioned, uh, I'm seeking your consideration of a resolution uh, approving a, 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 an agreement with the Preservation Foundation for a demonstration project at the Central Business District train station. Um, before we get into the nuances of the agreement, I thought it'd be important to just kind of take a step back and um, it was about seven years ago to the date where um, Susan Garrett was in these chambers announcing $835,000 in grant funds that the city received as part of the ITEP program. Fast forward seven years and the city has uh, invested approximately close to just under $3 million in a renovation project of the station, starting with the roof, then uh, finishing up last year with the exterior restoration and recently uh, this past fall completing uh, renovation of the the restrooms and relocation the hope was that the grant uh, would allow us the ability to not just uh, renovate the restrooms but also the lobby and some of the interior spaces um, you know unfortunately as as part of going through the restoration of a hundred year old train station you don't run into things you run into unanticipated circumstances that maybe prohibit the resources you have or your ability to, to do that um, but we have uh, undergone some planning and are hoping to get underway just uh, or are currently underway in some respects but hoping to complete this hopefully in the second quarter of next year and um, looking forward to sharing how we might uh, achieve that when we looked at the interior of the lobby, here is uh, orientation, the tracks uh, would be up here, but you know, really looked at you know, opening up the old restroom facilities, uh, redoing the tile floor, looking at some of the original wainscoting, replacing that, doing some mill work, uh, you know, emphasizing some of the historical integrity of the space, uh, of the spaces within it, and celebrating some of that by bringing it back. Uh, clearly, our budget and our resources had other um, other ideas for us, and um, you know to approach these, we were going to phase these over uh, the next several months, uh, starting with uh, the wainscoting, the wall repair, working down to the lobby flooring, and then doing some of the seating seating restoration. But as uh, the the mayor mentioned earlier, you know we are a fortunate community filled with angels, and one of those has been the Lake Forest Preservation Foundation. And, and I would say that they have been involved in this project, not since 2010, but since the 70s and 80s, uh, when they undertook a renovation back then and have been a part of this project uh, since, since we started. And are, are really delighted that they have come uh, on board with us to help finish this lobby, uh, this last stage of, of the improvements. And, um, and, and, and I think, 
it's a testament to not only the resources that they have been interested in contributing, but also the, the knowledge. Uh, every step of the way, they have been there. They have helped us. They have helped guide uh, our contractors, help guide our staff. And we're excited to work with them to kind of culminate this uh, with, with the lobby renovation. So uh, this evening is an agreement uh, that uh, we'll be considering that sort of formalizes this arrangement. And here is a proposed budget and, and how we would sort of split, split this work up. The city, uh, with the resources that they have remaining, which are estimated at above uh, approximately thirty-five dollars to $40,000, um, would complete the demolition of the existing restroom facilities, finish the, the, the walls um, in that area. Uh, but that is the extent of the resources that we may have available. Uh, the foundation would then uh, continue to complete that renovation, complete the lobby flooring, uh, complete the wainscoting repair inside the lobby, and are looking to refinish some of the seating inside that space as well, contributing approximately $100,000 to, to finish this work out. And um, it, uh, these are, of course, pre-bid estimates, um, but they are estimates that we believe will get us to a position where we can celebrate the interior of that space for another, hopefully, uh, 80 to 100 years. Um, so with that, uh, we are seeking approval um, of a resolution that would authorize the city manager and their clerk to execute this agreement based on these terms. Um, the, the, the resolution, I will note, um, just quickly, the, the write-up may not necessarily reflect uh, the agreement itself, but um, we have reviewed some of the, the, the corresponding scopes of work with the foundation, and they are comfortable with what's being presented to you this evening. Um, so with that, I uh, just want to introduce um, a couple members of the foundation who are here this evening, Jim Upsitnik with the executive uh, board there, Marcy Kerr, staff with the foundation, uh, and Dave Mattoon, another representative who has been a wealth of knowledge for us as we've embarked on uh, several stages of this project, um, but are really excited about completing this project, um, which I don't want to understate. Um, but I think you know we're poised to be able to do that with their support and generosity and commitment uh, to the city. Well, thank you. More Lake Forest Angels. Any particular questions, comments, thoughts from the council on this? I, I would just say what an honor it is to be on the Public Works Committee and led by, by uh, Alderman Tack and, and to learn about this. I, I, it's just such a wonderful, wonderful thing to, to have the Preservation Foundation with us on this and, and leading the charge and attention to detail and, and really making sure that it happens. So I thank you. Thank you. Yeah, even the work to date's a knockout already. So. <clears throat> Wonderful. Um, if there's no other uh, questions, um, is there an, uh, uh, any comments from the public regarding this uh, matter? Uh, seeing none, um, I'll bring it back to council uh, uh, and ask for a motion uh, to approve this resolution authorizing the city manager and the city clerk to execute the Lake Forest Preservation Foundation demonstration project agreement as presented in your packets tonight. So moved. Second. <laughs> With the tie. The tie. And uh, this. Uh, Will the clerk pr please call the roll? Alderman Beidler? Aye. Alderman Morris? Aye. Alderman Newman? Aye. Alderman Rock? <coughs> Aye. Alderman Tack? Aye. Alderman Reisenberg? Aye. Alderman Moreno? Aye. Alderman Bushman? Aye. Eight yay, zero nay. Motion carries. Uh, thank you. Um, next item of <coughs> business is opportunity for citizens to address the council on non agenda items. Um, is there anyone who would like to speak? Uh, seeing none, uh, we'll move on to item number five, items for the omnibus boat, vote consideration. Um, and there are a total of six this evening. The first is approval of the December 4th, 2017 City Council Minutes. Second is approval of the check register for the period October the 28th to December the 1st, 2017. Third is approval of a software license and services agreement with Bellafuel, Zur, and Associates for an enterprise resource planning system. Fourth is consideration of ordinances approving recommendations from the Building Review Board. Uh, this would be a first reading, uh, and if desired by council, a final approval. 
Fifth is consideration of an ordinance approving a recommendation from the Zoning Board of Appeals. This would be a first reading and if desired by council, a final approval. Item number six, consideration uh, to authorize the Finance and Public Works Committee Chairman to approve expenditures of $20,000 or higher for the PSB renovation project and approval of the construction management services agreement. Um, as we do with omnibus budgets um, or omnibus approvals, uh, we, any one of these items could be removed for a separate vote if a council member would like. But short of that, are there any particular comments or questions? Um, Alderman Biden. Yes, Mayor Lansing, I would actually um, t I'd like to make a suggestion of a modification to the minutes. On, uh, um, at the at the end of them, may I do? Would this Please. be an appropriate time to yes. do that? Yes. Yes. So there's a section at the end. I'm looking at an, an email here. So, not, uh, but the uh, when it's the it's the last item, essentially the last item on the uh, in the minutes where where it's talking about our discussion uh, after the omnibus and after the citizens address. And I, I I wanted to just be sure that the minutes reflected the discussion that we had here about additional ways, other possibilities, how were we going to handle the concerns that were raised? So I was suggesting um, that uh, the, the, the sentences there be modified to say, a further discussion included how to better communicate with residents on matters they had raised, including the proposed third rail, the environmental assessment, Lake Forest, lack of authority um, of or on the third rail, transparency, federal and state influences, and passenger service. <coughs> a number of ideas were proffered. Mayor Lansing reiterated that the third rail and the Amtrak stop are not dependent on each other. And that just adds that element of our discussion around alternate communication strategies. So I would propose that being the, the, um, the, the final, what's the actual, Biddy, what's the actual title of the section? Okay, so it's modified minutes, but I mean it's in that last section. It's just I'm okay. Anyway, I would propose that if, okay. that's, if that's acceptable. Mm -hmm. Any other thoughts, additions, deletions? All right. Um, I would. It's, uh, is there a motion to accept the omnibus um, items as presented, with the exception of the addition of Alderman uh, Bidler's uh, adjustments to the minutes? So moved. Second. Um, and this is also a roll call vote. Alderman Beidler? Aye. Alderman Morris? Aye. Alderman Newman? Aye. Alderman Rummel? Aye. Alderman Tack? Aye. Alderman Reisenberg? Aye. Alderman Moreno? Aye. Alderman Bushman? Aye. Eight yay, zero nay, motion carries. Uh, thank you. Uh, next item on the agenda is new ordinances uh, and the first is consideration of an ordinance amending chapter 95.177 and chapter 112.006 and chapter 135.135 to add electronic smoking devices to local ordinances governing tobacco products uh, to be introduced by Carl Waldorf chief of police good evening mr. mayor members of the city council uh, what we have before you is the addition of a definition for electronic smoking devices to all three local ordinances governing tobacco use and possession in, inside the city. Um, for some background on this, when all three of these ordinances were passed, electronic smoking devices didn't exist, and so they're not included currently. Um, last month, Superintendent Simic reached out to us uh, to discuss the problems they have had with these devices at the schools. Um, we were already fairly aware of it because, as you know, we have two officers assigned full-time to both schools. Um, and they had been running into this problem for several years. Uh, so we spent several months in research to see what our peers were doing. Um, and together, uh, they came up with a draft that Mr. Filippini has revised into what you have in front of you now. Um, if you have any questions, I could certainly go answer them. In, in uh, learning about this, Chief, it was remarkable with uh, these otherwise innocent seeming electronic vaping devices that, uh, uh, I don't know. with what, uh, the creativity of the entrepreneurs, I guess uh, uh, basically every chemical compound known to man is available yes. to be smoked. And so they have an enormously powerful potential for 
damage and all kinds of odd things. So it's, uh, um, it's quite an education in technology and, and an old area. Right, and one of the challenges was as these devices come and go so quickly was to, to find wording that would encompass as broadly as many of the brands, makes and models as, as that are out now or reasonably foreseen. Right, so. yeah, amazing. Um, any comments, Alderman Marino? Um, just a, a sidebar for, for all of us. Um, a friend of mine in, in Colorado, uh, entrepreneur, uh, has a business that focuses on OSHA related safety matters mm -hmm. for companies. And uh, in conversation with him, one of the uh, one of the areas that he has his attention turned to, his radar turned to, is increasing workers' comp and OSHA complaints related to the use of cannabis, which has become very widespread there, I understand. Um, so I, I don't know that that's uh, specifically related to this ordinance uh, or these changes to the ordinances, but I, I, I raise the point for everyone who might be thinking about cannabis and, and its impact on society. Uh, it's concerning to me because I, I don't think people really realize it's a drug, uh, just like alcohol is a drug and other things are drugs. And I just I think it's important to be aware of the impact on drugs of drugs on, on people and society. No, and certainly all of the devices that we're talking about here, our officers have encountered all of them being used for THC as well as nicotine. Um, and that's certainly one of the strong motivators. Yeah. And it's certainly popping up at the school more often than ever. Chief, uh, in the background discussion, there's mm -hmm. a reference to uh, repeated cases of electronic smoking devices containing THC being recovered from students at local schools. I'll plead my ignorance. What's THC? It's the active ingredient in cannabis. In cannabis. So you can distill it to a liquid form and then use it in many of these devices. Um, and it's much more difficult to detect than normal cannabis because it often doesn't have the strong associated smell with it. So our officers at the schools, for example, have often handled these unknown whether they contain THC or not. How do you determine that? Do you have to do just would, a chemical analysis? Yeah, it would have to go to the lab to be tested. Um, there's also a spot test. Uh, but for our purposes, we'd prefer to go to the lab. And our current codes are broad enough that uh, if it is found to have THC, that can be handled under the current cannabis types of correct violation. Okay. Uh, well, thank you. Uh, with respect to this uh, <clears throat> new ordinance, uh, is there anyone in the audience who'd like to make a comment? Uh, seeing none. Um, I'll ask for a motion um, to waive first reading and grant final approval to an ordinance amending Chapter 95, Chapter 112, and Chapter 135 to add electronic smoking devices to these ordinances. I will make that motion. Second. <clears throat> um, will the city clerk please call the roll? Alderman Feidler? Aye. Alderman Morris? Aye. Alderman Newman? Aye. Alderman Rummel? Aye. Alderman Tack? Aye. Alderman Reisenberg? Aye. Alderman Moreno? Aye. Alderman Bushman? Aye. Eight yay, zero nay. Motion carries. Uh, this concludes, uh, as there are no items under new business or additional items for council discussion, I believe. Um, this concludes the regular session of the city council. Um, and pursuant to my remarks uh, earlier this evening, I asked for a motion to amend the agenda and to add executive uh, session. Now, uh, pursuant to the 51, or, or fifth ILCS, chapter 120 slash two C2, uh, the city council will be discussing personnel matters. And, and um, Mr. Mayor, I might suggest first we do this as two different motions, one simply to amend the agenda, and that can be a voice vote. Okay. And then if that is approved, then we will have the motion to go into executive session. And just for uh, clarification, it's uh, 2C1 of the Open Meetings Act, not 2C2. Still okay. personnel issue. Yeah. Correct. 2C1. All right. So first, uh, a motion to amend the agenda. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, the motion passes. Uh, I will ask again for a uh, motion to amend the agenda pursuant to fifth. Uh, this would actually be to go into executive session. Oh, you want to go into it? Okay. Mm -hmm. okay, a motion to go into executive session. So moved. Second. 
Um, and that would be for personnel under 2C2 to be able to meet exactly. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay. And this is a roll call vote. 2C1, I misspoke now. Uh oh. <laughs> now you're giving Alderman me Beidler. bad information. <laughs> we'll check the minutes on this. Alderman Beidler? Aye. Alderman Morris? Aye. Alderman Newman? Aye. Alderman Rommel? Aye. Alderman Tack? Aye. Alderman Reisenberg? Aye. Alderman Moreno? Aye. Alderman Bushman? Aye. Eight yay, zero nay, motion carries. Okay, and just for clarification, there'll be no further city council business after the executive session. Thank you. <laughs>